Hendrick Motorsports is suing Hooters. NASCAR added a new aero piece after Corey LaJoy's flip. And COG has a driver announcement scheduled for Friday. <music> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Hendrick Motorsports is suing Hooters for unpaid sponsorship payments. Uh, well, an LLC associated with Hendrick Motorsports, HMS Holdings, is suing Hooters for $1.75 million in unpaid sponsorship fees. And of course, at the end of July, well, a little bit in the middle of July, the two parties announced that they would not be continuing the relationship. Uh, Chase Elliott was supposed to have Hooters on the car a couple races ago at Richmond. That was a Coca-Cola scheme that was originally scheduled to be a Hooters race, but because they missed so many payments this year, yeah, the team wasn't about to put Hooters on the car out of the kindness of their hearts. Chase Elliott did, of course, take Hooters to Victory Lane earlier this year at Texas when he finally got back to Victory Lane after going winless in 2023. But Hendrick Motorsports is now looking for not only sponsorship payment, but also interest on those payments as well. Hooters apparently has only paid Hendrick $45,000 this year as part of their sponsorship agreement. Hooters was supposed to make four installment payments this year on March 10th, on June 10th, on August 10th, and October 10th. Obviously on March 10th, they only got a partial payment from Hooters of $45,000, well below what they're supposed to get paid. In June, they did not receive a payment, thus the cancellation of their agreement. Obviously August passed, August 10th did, and they didn't get paid again this lawsuit was filed back on july 30th and for hendrick motorsports it makes a lot of sense i know there's going to be people out there that are like you know rick hendrick's worth a billion dollars why doesn't he just let this go this is business at the end of the day they've created budgets around this race team thinking that they were going to get this money from hooters they're not receiving it you should go after the money that you are owed that's what it comes down to you wouldn't just let somebody skip out on something i have this rule that if something if I had to return something, it has to, you know, reach a certain threshold before I'm like, okay, I'll actually go return it because it's worth my time to go do that. Same thing with like, ah, somebody owes me 20 bucks. Eh, is it really that big of a deal? No, absolutely not. Somebody owes me, you know, a thousand dollars. Eh, I'll probably actually go ask about that. It's, it's something that's worth it. Somebody owes you a one and a half to $1.75 million. You pick up the phone, and you're like, hey, uh, they're not paying, so we need to go get that money because it's a substantial amount of money. And for Hendrick Motorsports, uh, they're not going to receive all their money, more than likely, and I think Hooters is probably headed towards Chapter 11 bankruptcy at some point in the near future. For Hendrick, though, it's just about getting some sort of payment out of this. They did, of course, have a sponsored car for Hooters and did not receive payment for that. Again, they're not doing this out of the kindness of their hearts. They're not just putting sponsors on the car and you know not accepting payment. They want to get paid, and I don't blame them for that. More to come on this story. I'm sure the same way that Kyle Busch sued Rev Racing, not for like sponsorship um, uh, type of thing, but for you know missing payments and not getting paid what he was due. He was awarded that money in court just a couple weeks ago. Hendrick Motorsports will be going after Hooters as well. Today's video is brought to you by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Great sunglasses. I am very partial to the Classic as well as the Camber. Neither of them are in my office right now. They are both downstairs because I wear them on a daily basis. So head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, moving on to the next big topic of the day, and that is the new shark fin that NASCAR has mandated for all NASCAR Cup Series cars this weekend at Daytona. So following Corey LaJoy's blowover crash last weekend at Michigan, where the car took off very quickly and was immediately upside down, NASCAR has now mandated a shark fin. So right now on the NASCAR Cup Series cars, there is a shark fin on the driver's side on the left side of the car that runs down that rear window. There will now also be one mirrored on the right side of the car, on the passenger side of the car, that will also run from the roof down to the trunk alongside that rear window. The idea behind Behind this is to increase the takeoff speed of these cars. So uh, Bozy did a great breakdown of it on Twitter, and I'm just going to use what he said because it's a solid example. If Corey LaJoy flipped over at, say, 205 mile an hour, that's how he took off at Michigan, raising that takeoff speed to now, say, 215 or 220, he'd have to be going that fast for the car to now take off. And that's what NASCAR's goal here is, is to increase that speed. So if he does turn sideways, he has not reached that takeoff speed as of now, right? And the idea when you do turn sideways is that the speed will decrease, so you're not going to hit that takeoff. It's more about as soon as you get turned sideways, that immediate reaction like we saw with the Joy where he went over, it's to make sure that when that does happen, that that takeoff speed number is 
substantially or at least increasingly above what your speed is now. So if the former takeoff speed at Michigan was say 205, like what Bozy said, adding the shark wing onto the side of it right here will now increase that takeoff speed to 215 should be safe and shouldn't necessarily happen again. Well, of course, have to wait and see. But NASCAR didn't do this as a knee jerk type of reaction. They had been testing it in wind tunnel uh, and wind tunnel days leading up to them mandating it earlier this week. I know some teams had to take their cars off of the haulers. Um, the cars were already loaded up, headed to Daytona, had to take cars back off, install that, put them back up and then, you know, send the guys on their way down to Daytona. But for for teams, I think this is a step in the right direction for drivers. Nobody wants to see a car flip over that easily. And I know there's going to be the hardos in the comments that are like, cars been flipping over forever. Nothing new it just sounds soft when you say that it shouldn't happen. It's not crazy to be like, hey, we want to keep these guys safe. We don't want to see cars blow over that easily. Yeah, cars have been flipping over literally since the beginning of time. Gen 4 cars flipped over. Gen 5 cars flipped over. Gen 6 cars flipped over. Gen 7 cars flipped over. Cars will always find a way to flip over if the physics are right for it. It's just always going to happen. But a car turning sideways by itself shouldn't just take off take off of the ground and end up on its roof, sliding down towards the turn three grass. It just shouldn't happen, right? Everything did its job, except for the fact that as soon as he turned sideways, he was up and over. People are going to say that the wind gusts, this and that. That's fine. You can say anything that you want. At the end of the day, we should be able to keep these cars on the ground as they turn sideways. So NASCAR is taking a preemptive measure here, and hopefully it works out because obviously last year at Daytona, we saw one of the wildest flips we've ever seen with Ryan Priest when he flipped 10 times down the backstretch. I was there sitting up in the 400 section there uh, towards pit road entrance, and I was watching it as it happened, and I legit thought two cars were flipping through the backstretch there because it went on for so long, and it was so violent, and there's so much dirt kicked up in the air. It was one of the craziest things you've ever seen. So for LaJoy and everybody else in the garage area, hopefully this gives them you know a little bit of peace of mind. Obviously, Daytona, Talladega, Atlanta, Michigan, things can get wild. It happens. It's It's auto racing, right? Every Anything and everything can happen. And if something it has never happened before, chances are it will eventually happen. So for this, I like that they added it in. I think it's a good safety measure and keeping these cars on the ground to avoid a crazy, you know, aggressive flip. I, I'm all for that. What will happen if he slides down and hits the inside wall? Okay. I, honestly, there's no pleasing anybody in these situations, but keeping the car on the ground is definitely the way to go. Uh, you can control a lot more variables when the car stays down versus when it is flipping through the air. So that is a win for this week. Hopefully it works. And if not, I'm sure NASCAR R&D is going to go to work on trying to figure out how and why that car took off and what to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. Last thing of the day, Colorado Racing has a Xfinity driver announcement for Friday at Daytona International Speedway. A lot of people speculate that it's Christian Eckes. It is not Christian Eckes that it will be announced on Friday. At least that's not the initial plan that I heard. Still expect Eckes to end up over there, but it will be a different driver. I'm not going to say who that driver is right now. I think a lot of people have maybe connected the dots at this point, but I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Colleg. Colleg Racing has an announcement 2 o'clock on Friday at Daytona International for one of their drivers for the 2025 NASCAR Xfinity Series. Tune in for that. I'm sure it'll be all over social um, right as two o'clock hits, and I'll have a video out about that tomorrow. Let me know in the comments what you think about Nas or Hendrick suing Hooters, NASCAR adding that shark fin, who Call Racing will be announcing as their driver for the Xfinity Series, and like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.